Hey YouTube, welcome back to Universe X. And uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the case tournament uh, I was just in down at uh, Comic Kings in Virginia. It was definitely, definitely a fun event. Got to see a lot of bros again. Um, first time I've been at a tournament since uh, the North Carolina player celebration. So it's it's been a hot minute. And um, I was just really, really excited to play. So uh, first and foremost, I wanted to go into my deck list and then uh, tell you how the matches went and tell you how the event was overall. And uh, that'll about wrap up this video. I'll try to go fast, not to take up too much of your time in one chunk, but uh, we have a lot of good content coming up this week. You know, I've got uh, some deck profiles I'll go into a little later. Um, we got some little player interviews. I uh, got something cooking up with a good friend and prominent player. And now uh, there's just a lot to go over this week. So uh, first off, I just like so like to say shout outs to Aspira TCG. I'm gonna have his uh, channel in the link. Uh, that was amazing this morning when I was going to the tournament and saw that uh, Bandai had worked with him to reveal the green, or the, sorry, the red for uh, Giant Force, the next draft box. I was like, big ups, like the grind, immaculate. So it shows you consistency and hard work do pay off. And that's amazing. So, 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 um, I, I'm going to ask one more time like uh, as always if you like the content think about hitting that subscribe button uh, hit the like button let me know if you liked what had to be said and uh, let's get into the deck profile so the leader that I played despite my initial eh-ness on the deck uh, was actually Dark Broly and Paragus um, you guys I'm not even going to put a link to the video I did because the link to the video I did does not do the deck enough justice. Um, on paper, I kind of didn't like its limitations. Uh, initial testing, I didn't like it. And then once I actually got into testing it, um, had a little bit of more insight given to me by Amani and uh, was able to play a lot more and realized, hey, this deck isn't the deck I thought it was. And then I went to the pre-release and packed actually like pretty much starter deck version of Dark Broly and was like, wow, this deck is not exactly what I thought it was. Looked a lot more into it and found out that, hey, I wanted to play it. And then um, right before the event, I saw the terror that was Gotenks, but it was just too close for me to get everything and feel comfortable enough playing it, you know, being this rusty at the game. So I mean, this is cool. Uh, shout out to my friend and Nick, who you saw in the box opening, who allowed me to use his stamp after I sold mine <laughs> at the pre-release, because I wasn't holding on to that. But uh, we'll get right into the deck list. Uh, first off, we've got four Broly Savage Runs, or Savage uh, Rush. Um, he's just the starter of the deck, you guys should already know. Actually, you know what, I will link that video because it'll at least tell you what the cards do. But um, Homeboy here starts up the chain. Uh, you really want to open up with him in a ball every single game because he allows you just to play himself and fish out exactly what you need. If you're playing against SS4 Vegeta, you get a 30k blocker on board turn one. If uh, you're up against most decks, other decks than that, you just play this guy and move on to the uh, warp one from grave, warp one from uh, hand to offset the advantage of going second. The whole point of going second is you get that extra card. Well, you set him down to six, or from six to five and leave a 30k swinger on board for next turn and not only are you going in with momentum you're also completely taking away that advantage so um monumental play and then he can be brought back by removing three black battle cards and playing a black energy if you don't have him in hand so later in game you just need ball in hand to actually do that so that's pretty cool uh next other cards you've got four of the uh toa Union of Magic and Space. She's really just there to fetch the Dragon Ball. She can get the Dragon Ball uh, from your deck when she's played. She can also just kind of snipe it uh, from the graveyard by paying one black, but that's hardly ever used. At least I never used it. Um, this card is very, very interesting. Uh, actually one of the better cards in the deck. So this is a Toa Dark Aura Deluge. Um, once per turn, she chooses one of your black cards with a battle cost of 30,000 power uh, and places it in its owner's drop area, and then um, she's able to bring one back to your hand. So um, the thing about this card is that it's recursion, and initially I did not think this card really did anything in the deck. I still had the Paragases because I was stupid. But um, the thing about this card is that in this format, there's a lot of really, really, really strong um, uh, negation, like the ability to stop your opponent from attacking whether it be through Dormant, which I found out first 
hand today, the, the force, the serious force, or there'd be Baby Hatch, which just came out. But the point is, when you get negated in this deck and you get completely walled, you don't ever have a chance to combo off or activate battle your 30k to the grave, which could throw off your numbers uh, for your combos. It could throw off your ability to recycle effects. And this card is great because for one energy, you can play it, sack a battle card to get a battle card, and that battle card that you sacked could give you the thing you need in grave to remove. Uh, it could also give you the Broly engraved to bring back when you've already used this effect last turn, but you haven't summoned it this turn. So this card is monumental and is a combo extender and can work around things like Hatch and Dormant. Um, nothing special to see here. You just got the four super combos. Um, it's not like, I mean, this is good because this deck has so many cards that don't do anything in your hand. It's just good to be able to tuck and then draw two to attempt to get the, your cards that are good. Um, I will say one thing with the leader, I'll back up, is because the leader says um, on its front side that you can look up to the top five cards from the top of your deck and place up to three battle cards that are black with 30k power, it works like the t uh, that one one drop trunks, the look at the top two, choose a sand, discard the other one. You don't have to look at all five, you can one, two, three, and if you have three 30ks in hand, you just drop those and keep going. I suggest playing it this way because you stack less valuable cards. like. Yes, they could be 30Ks too, but when you flip over those super uh, those um, those uh, super combos or your negates that you didn't have to because you already spotted three, you don't need to stack those. You don't need to put those at the bottom of the deck. So I would highly suggest peeping one at a time and stopping as soon as you have your three. I can see my reflection here. That's, that's pretty cool. Peep that. Anywho, um, two Chompa. Okay, pretty neat. You guys already know what this is. It's Reach Incarnate. Um, when you have a 30k beater, putting it to 40k double strike is generally going to be hard to combo out of. I mean, your opponent's going to have to give a pretty pennies, and if you have super combos behind that, generally, if you chop up for game in this deck, you're going to get it. Um, we've got two of the Secret Identity Mass Sand. Uh, the card is just there because uh, he removes up to six cost of things on board, so he can one for one if you're in the mirror. Um, he can remove a Go Tanks if you're facing the Go Tanks thing, and that's good. Warping those Go Tanks is good. Um, then he also can get rid of a Boonie and all the tokens on the field at the same time. In fact, depending on the uh, deck, because I did face two Soul Strikers and there was three of them around, uh, depending on the deck, oh, four of them around actually, depending on the deck, you can just a Boonie, a two drop, and all the tokens. And so that's a massive swing in board presence. Um, now, moving on to the Brolies, this one's gonna be a non-brainer. You got four of the Blocker Broly. Um, he's used the least, I mean, he's really just there to swing in and, or to, to, he blocks every now and then, but he's really just an extra 30k swing. And half the time when you put him in the blocks and he doesn't have a barrier, they'll wipe him off, whether it's with Reaper, whether it's with whatever, they'll wipe him off the board because they don't wanna have to swing through him. But still, that's a card they could have used on something else that was more important. That there's a, he's, he's bait, he's tasty bait. Um, this guy, the best Dark Burly in the deck, hands down. You play him on turn one when you go first to eliminate your opponent's uh, resources. Uh, eliminate your opponent's advantage from going second. You play him on turn two to turn your opponent's likely four card hand into a three card hand. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. You loop him throughout the battle to keep taking at your opponent's presence. Um, you use it against Go Tanks to make sure that when you kill their Reaper, they have nothing to recur in grave, which kills part of the plus. Um, you use it against the mirror to make sure they can't, like, I can't stress. You use it against anybody who, using blue decks to keep them off of sparking. Like, you literally abuse this card. This card should have by far been the SR, um, not the one that's coming up. This is by far, far and away, the best Dark Broly in the deck. Um, then you've got the SR, he warps from field. Um, yes, he's removal, but he doesn't get around barrier, and I feel like because he's only usable once per turn, he should definitely get around barrier, but whatever. Um, if everything in Gotenks enough deflect, this guy should be more barrier. So, um, this is a really good card, looks amazing, but yeah, he just works on his own field, he's just board control. Um, like I said, the middle one was the best one. Um, then, we are going to get into these. Um, these are the TP Mass Sand Brainwash No Mores. Um, he's a very, very, very good card, just in case you need a refresher. 
Um, Overwhelm 6. When this card is played using Overwhelm, place up to the top three battle cards from your warp into, or sorry, place up to three battle cards from your warp into your drop area. And then uh, activate battle. Black, if your leader card is black and you discard this card from your hand, place one card from your life to your drop area, then your leader card does not take damage for the battle. So basically you take one damage instead of whatever other damage. They come at you with a Xeno Cell for game and you have an energy up and you use this, you're only taking one damage. Um, irreplaceable card. I didn't get to use it this turn or this game because or this tournament, but um, it's a very, very good card. And if you do overwhelm it for just another swing, he gets to put cards back into your warp, uh, meaning that you're not going to be quite in the water uh, the next turn. It actually is pretty good because you can use this guy and then uh, put three back. Use your leader skill, put three back. You're already primed for almost completely a Broly card. Um, it's it's a very, very good card and it can save you out of a lot of situations. The only issue is getting your hands on it because the deck like the set has been legal for a couple of days um but i was fortunate enough to get my hands on two so um great great girl not really much to explain there. um this card ss4 bardock combat instinct so i am by far a mid-range player but if i had to classify myself between mid-range and you know um not mid-range well mid-range and aggro versus control in that i'd be an aggro mid-range i like to be I like to punch, but um, I definitely prefer the mid-range strategies. This guy is a momentum monster. If you are already pushing cards out of your opponent's hand due to you know your aggression, this guy just allows you to come through and do it hard. You know, you you push cards out of your hand, you push cards out of your hand, you push cards out of their hand, you slam down the uh, Ravenger Broly, remove from grave, remove. They choose to remove from their hand, and then when they only have a couple cards left you drop this guy and forcibly snatch two of the cards they were trying to keep. Um, he's a very, very good card. Uh, if you're doing it early game, like, you know, if you start off going second and you remove their cards down, um, then you end up slamming this on turn three and you pretty much bottom up their hand, you really start putting them in a very oppressive spot. Um, it's how I combat blue, just continue to attack their hand um, until they're out of resources and the deck doesn't do well when it's out of resources. It needs to start playing off the top of the deck and that's not its specialty. I mean, they can get bombs, it can draw, but I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is a book of cards and a bunch of negates. Um, then just in case the game goes too long, we've got the most beautiful SPR in the game, at least close to it. We got Fu. Um, he's a 30K black card, so he can be used for my leader effect. I don't even have to pay that one to pay or to get 10K combo power. So um, that's pretty neat. And uh, if the game gets that long, this guy will end it. You just put Broly's on board and then you over for this guy and you get a bunch of 30K beaters. And this guy's a 30K double strike beater and your opponent can't use effects. It's beautiful. Um, this deck can definitely operate without a secret rare, but I did put in a secret rare because this deck doesn't have a lot of a uh, double strike, triple strike. And against a lot of decks in the format, this guy does work. Like you swing this into a dormant and even if they dormant, you get to rip their entire hand. So they're not doing anything with that hand next turn. Um, you play it against the mirror as I did today and it's absolutely devastating. Um, there's a bunch of decks that if the game goes this long, this card is an absolute menace. Now it is vulnerable to a lot of things. Reaper, um, the SR Dark Broly. Uh, there's a lot of things this is like good for, but generally it only needs one activation to prove its worth. And then they spend the next turn getting rid of it because they can't get swung onto it by the, uh, by again. It's, just, it's a good card. Um, now moving on, because we need to speed up this video a little bit. We get two of the C, or wow, why do I keep doing this with the unisons? We get two of the unisons. Um, Basically, this guy can provide an extra swing when he's over three counters, three counters or higher. Um, his plus one will extend your graveyard a little bit more. You know, you just end up plus oneing and putting two 30Ks back. But um, really, you try to get him to four. This guy's annoying enough to want to not have on the field, but not annoying enough to ignore my life or um, or sometimes my threats on board. So I found a lot of times people just kind of let this guy slide. And when he gets to his four, he's a devastating minus four. He's actually, because his deck doesn't really use energy a lot of times, I just play it as a four drop. Like you can be on five energy and play it as a four drop and just completely change the amount of depth your turn has. So um, this guy's a monster, not more than two though, because he clogs up the deck. Um, as for negates, four power burst, 
because Power Burst allows you to get back a one drop, which could be a deluge for uh, plays. It could be a one drop Broly if you have the ball in hand. There's a lot of good things this guy does, but uh, also when you Power Burst, even if you're not gonna use that card, you just add a 5K combo to your leader because you're bringing back a 30K that can be activated battled. Um, then you got two max power, uh, an MVP of the just deck. I mean, you already use him to wipe cards that are way too thick off the board, and that's absolutely disgusting. So, um, yeah, it's it's just a really, really, really good card. Um, and then his other effect, when you use it, you can warp four to bring it back to your hand. So this is one of the only decks that can use that to its max def uh, max effect. Negate something, minus four, bring it back to hand negate next turn or better yet warp something off their board because in this game this format there's a lot of cheating cards that a lot of people don't have six energy with six energy cost cards on board so you can warp something warp four from your grave bring it back and have it as a defense for the next turn this is a very versatile card and dark broly right now is the deck in the format that can use it to its greatest potential then uh shout outs to jordan for letting me borrow them <laughs> but i had two protector of the pieces um, I actually, it was my least used card in the deck this entire weekend. It's unfortunate. But um, you can negate an attack, then you can discard a card, and after, if you discarded a card, every time a battle card swings at your leader, your leader gains plus 5,000. Um, it's really cool, but it also still lets Unison get through, so um, I will not probably be playing it if I take this deck out to another event. Um, for Dragon Balls, um, just because you already know what it is, um, I kind of thought about putting it down to three, but I mean, you need to see it in your opening hand. Um, it's just, it just is what it is. So that's pretty cool. You guys already know what the ball does, allows you to toolbox with the one drop early. And then last but not least, we have got the Majin Buu uh, human extinction attack. Um, it's good because it's some graveyard control, but also the mill four is cool. I mean, giving the black card plus 15, awesome. Milling four, yes, while it's a uh, random mill and can hurt you, it really does fill up that graveyard, and I run 30 30Ks, so I generally have some pretty good chances of hitting. Then um, on top of that, you end up seeing, uh, you end up being able to remove a card from grave, whether that be an ape for your control players, your mid-range players, whether that be another Broly in the opposing matchup, whether that be a Gotenks uh, fodder card to recur with Reaper. So yeah, this is a very good card. Now the side deck, we're just gonna blow through because we've already spent enough time. Um, two, Mechabura, the Broken Seal. He is essentially the prohibition of this deck, the pithing needle of this deck, uh, for you guys that play Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Magic. Um, but this guy allows you to just call a character type, or character trait, well, sorry, character, and uh, cost. So if I'm in the mirror, Dark Broly 6, can't do it next turn. Um, Go Tank 6, can't do that. There's a bunch of cool cards. Abuni, 4. Like, there's a bunch of cards you can call it with this, and your knowledge of the game makes this a better card. Um, it's powerful. Um, now, I did think I was going to face Majin Vegeta, like the aggro version, uh, or potentially the Gogeta Vanilla beatdown. So I did play these, did not use them once. I'm not sure if Majin Vegeta aggro is going to be strong or not, but I played two. Uh, I played a Majin Vegeta that was very, very much so mid-range, using the unison, uh, unisons a lot more. So uh, I'm going to probably put a link to his deck profile when he puts it up. Uh, we just sub to each other. So anywho. This card, probably going out, but Crisis Crush for obvious reasons, if I thought I was going to be facing one drop, I'd be down. Um, Haru Haru, uh, the attacker Majin, tragic. I lost a game because I didn't see one of four, but I'll talk about that later. Um, but you guys already know, this is an old but gold card against green leaders. Uh, Deborah, Darkness Perfected. Um, this card, he's able to cut play, uh, be played for two instead of three. And uh, during your opponent's turn, when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it can't activate its effect or skills or um, attack for the duration of the turn. Uh, pretty cool, but against Gotenks where everything has deflect, it's not exactly the best. Um, you've got Bardock, um, fully unleashed. And uh, this card, that old champion pack, my cat's trying to get up on me. This old champion pack card, um, he basically, when he comes down for five over realm, say hi, but don't touch anything. Um, when um, you play this card from Overroam, you get to remove all of your opponent's cards with a uh, six cost or higher, and uh, send them to war. So against uh, your opponent, if you're place if you're facing the mirror, this could just be a complete blowout. And then the last cards 
our SS Bardock the Tenacious. Um, he's the Nimbus for this deck. He's over on Nimbus, and um, he's just over there for aggro matchups. So let me talk about the tournament and how it went for me real quick, and then I will wrap up the video. So um, that being said, um, my first round, because I'll get right on this, my first round was against an uh, old friend Colin from the DMV area. Um, he was playing Soul Striker. I was playing Broly. Uh, game one, I was just very, 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 very offensive. Um, constantly just swung as this deck, uh, deck should, because this deck could play like an early mid range or a very low to the ground aggressive deck. And now um, against Soul Striker, you know how it is. They have blue cards. The higher up they get on energy, the more devastating bombs they'll play. So I just elected to go balls in and um, just swing and swing and swing and swing and swing until the man was dead. Um, the end of the game ended with not enough cards in hand. I was able to resolve Bardock and then just uh, take two more cards and then proceed to go. Um, the second game went into time and basically it went into time. I had the win for the first game and even with the second game, he resolved in the boonie, but I had a lot of fodder in hand to stop from getting attacked by tokens. So I'm not sure how that would have gone because he was at two life and I just had to see a Chompa. So it is what it is. Um, my second round, I faced the Majin Vegeta and uh, I was expecting it to be super aggro, but I saw him play a unison and I was like, not nah, me. And so um, we played pretty hard. Um, game one, I was not ready for the hand destruction package. I underestimated that to a massive amount, but he ripped through my hand and through my cards. And uh, at the end of the game, he just had three cards on board that could swing through me. So that was actually really, really cool. I, was, I appreciate his deck list. Um, game two, I realized that even though he wasn't playing one drops, he was the control deck. And so I had to be the aggressor. So I pushed very, 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 very hard from the get go. Reckless abandon even. And um, those ending, I was able to punish his hand to the point where he had four cards in hand. I bar docked him down to two and then proceeded to swing the rest of his life out. Um, then game three, um, it was kind of awkward because I had to be the aggressive aggressor, but he was going first. And um, he also understood that the deck had a lot more speed than I guess he initially thought. So he was definitely playing more defensively. Um, in the end of, at the end of the day, it came down to him having six cards in hand and two life. And um, I swung at him with my leader. He, he had used Mechabora and called, um, he called six drop Broly, so I couldn't do anything. I had a, a Broly four drop on board, or a Broly six drop on board, and uh, I think I had the unison too. So I swung with my leader, which got shocking death ball, bringing him down to no energy. I swung with my, um, I swung with my Broly, and um, I'm sorry, I swung with my, uh, my six drop Broly that was on board, and that, got hit with um, the shocking death ball from life. Oh yeah, and I didn't have the unison because what I did next was, or maybe the unison only had one counter on it, I think, or two. What I did next was I played, um, I was hoping to get my Haru Haru off of my draws because I hadn't seen any of my four, but he was tapped out with one life and, um, and he had uh, two cards in hand, or four cards in hand at this point. So I was hoping to get my Haru Haru, I couldn't get it, so I had to use two out of my three energy to play my super combo. And I swung my super combo. Now this seems very, very bad, right? But my hand had another super combo in it in Majin Buu Extinction Attack, meaning this guy was gonna go up to base 40K, 30K to this guy's four cards in hand. Um, I was very, very confident in that, but he had the dormant and I thought that, okay, well, we'll have to play it out in combo, but I forgot my not knowledge of step 10, dormant killed a two drop or less. So he blew my super combo off the map and passed with two cards in hand, both of them, only one of them comboable, by the way, and um, then one life. So I was very sad that I lost that that close and I didn't see one of four hard arms that hurt. Um, my next round was um, against one of my friends who I actually drove up with, Zach, and he plays Soul Striker 2. Um, game one. I'm trying to remember who won game one. I think um, one of the games he did normal control things in one. The uh, the other time I did my normal aggressive on field aggressive towards hand combos in one, like just ripping his hand to pieces. And then the last game, um, the last game we had a pretty back and forth 
until the very end, uh, the very last turn, he was at two life. I was holding on to a Chompa and I just needed one attack to get through, but he was able to heroic prospect me. And um, at three life with a boonie and three tokens on board and him with a grip of like maybe like four or five, I didn't think I was gonna survive the turn because I survived his big push, but I didn't think I was gonna actually survive the next turn. So I was like, okay, I have to make this push here. So when he heroic prospected me, I tried to push through. And of course he had another negate, but he also had a, uh, the Go Tanks Unison that blocks. And so I wasn't able to break through and my last attack got through. My last attack did not, uh, did not get through, got blocked. And the issue was I had another attack, but I could not swing that other attack and discard my Chompa and my other card. Like I, there was just no way. I couldn't take both lives, so that was a no. Um, my next match was the Mirror versus another friend, Journey. Um, game one, uh, I hadn't played the Mirror before, but I had a pretty solid grasp because I played the deck. So game one, I didn't aggress on his life at all. Um, I let I let him take my life, and I only took his life with my leader swing if I needed to, if he didn't already have a Broly. Like if he had a Broly on the board tapped, I just swung with the Broly, got my draw, then made sure I negated or removed his Broly. Um, I kept bringing Ravager on and off the board to take away from his hand, take away from his uh, grave, and then um, I just controlled his hand and grave and didn't touch his life. Made him work to have any cards. Um, later in the game, I resolved a Bardock and just ripped what was left of his hand. Um, I protected my Unison and replenished my graveyard. And then when he was at, when he finally awakened and got everything together, I demigrated him and took his entire hand and forced him to use it again. So um, the, the game just spiraled from there. Then our second game went and it pretty much was going the same way. He was able to amass more of a hand this time. So I kind of ditched the hand destruction strategy and started trying to just push him in face to get cards out of his hand that way. And when his hand got low enough, that's when I started going back to like Bardox and whatnot. Um, and then we went into time, but yeah, that was pretty much the same. It had the same feel as the first game. Um, the last match, I was 2-2. My other friend from the car was 2-2. There was no reason for us to play. So we just chilled around because there was no reason for us to get all into that. So yeah, that was the tournament report. Um, I say unexpected things was that the, uh, the mid-range unison-based Majin Vegeta deck, that was really nice. It felt way more consistent than the aggro puncher face out deck. Um, also, as expected, Gotenks was rampant. As not expected, though, Red Broly. Like I said earlier, that deck is night and day with a TP, but I forgot that people would have access to TPs because some people were just broken. And um, so Red Broly was monstrous. Like, it went so far in. I've actually got a deck profile coming out for you guys from uh, one of the two undefeateds at the tournament. So uh, look out for that. I'll put the link down in here once I have it uploaded, but look out for that. So yeah, that was my tournament report. Uh, that was my deck list. The video went on a little long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, past that, like I said, like the video. If you like the content, comment down. For if you have anything to say about the deck list, about the, the tournament, and um, subscribe if you want more of this kind of content. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time you decide to join by, drop by, drop by Universe X. I'm sorry, it's super late. Been out all day. Later.